Today on Dungeon Craft, I show you how to make these cool dungeon doors. Today I'm going to show you how to make these double-sided doors. They look really fancy and complex and it, like it must have taken me hours to make them, but actually, even including the drying time, it only takes about an hour. This is my craft wood. You can buy whole bags of circles and rectangles for just a few dollars and they can be used to make tons of things. This is a two inch by one inch wide rectangle. You start out by measuring a, a quarter of an inch and um, we're gonna eliminate that with some craft scissors just snipping it off like so I measure another half inch down and draw a line there keeping this little mark in the middle I then take a soda bottle cap and I put that in the center and just trace out the round part that's going to be the top of my door and this soda bottle cap method is an excellent way to cheat your way through this craft. Take your craft scissors, cut that little bit of wood away. Using my ruler and my pencil, I draw several planks. I usually make five. This one's always located in the center of the door. First time I use the pencil, I go over it lightly in case I need to erase, but the next time I press harder, making a groove in the wood. And I do that for both sides. Then I go over these planks with my soldering tool, burning a groove. The more passes I make, the deeper the groove becomes. I don't press hard. I let the hot tool do the work. Using a round brush, I paint the grooves black. That's because pencil and ballpoint pen ink come out shiny. There's no need to use a straight edge. If you mess up a little bit, it's going to come out fine anyway. The most important thing is to get the black in the groove. I'm using a number two filbert brush and some dark brown paint and I am painting the planks. I like a filbert brush because if the plank is wider, you can use the flat side to spread the paint. But if you made uh, the planks too close together, you can always use it like that. And you paint the planks leaving the black in the groove so it will look like this. I started out with a Reaper miniature paint called Earth Brown and I'm moving to one called Faded Khaki which is really like a tan. I'm using palette paper, it's like wax paper and I'm, I'm doing that instead of a paper towel for this painting technique because this is wood and it really absorbs a lot of paint so what I do is I go right down using the chisel side of my brush not really the flat side I go right down the plank in the center and then I blend it in. Um, I don't have to get the entire plank end to end. We just sort of want to suggest that there's a plank there. Once we're done, we can kind of blend it in. This allows the natural wood that we're using pick up the color and it will look like that. A door like this is going to have banding and ornamentation and to put that on we're going to use this clear glue. The banding that's going to go on the bottom of the door is cut from a cereal box and we're just going to attach it with the glue. It'll be located at the bottom of the door. In the jewelry section of your craft store you're going to find rhinestones, tiny rhinestones like this and what we're going to do is use those as uh, rivets on the banding. In the jewelry aisle of my craft store, I found this, um, these things used for making jewelry, and it occurred to me that they would make excellent ornamental banding for my door. Using my glue, I'm going to put one of these at the top and the bottom of the door, and I'm going to use a generous amount of glue because it's going to dry clear. The great thing about this type of glue is that we have a few minutes to, uh, to move it around to get it where we like it, moving around into place with our X-Acto knife. Also at the craft store you can find these metal clasps and we can just put some uh, 
clear glue on that a generous amount so it actually goes through the clasp and on top and we're going to do it to the other side as well that's going to be our doorknob slash knocker i've added more studs on to the doors and now i have to paint the this banding and we're going to go back to where we started earth brown leaving the studs black I'm also going to paint the studs flat black as well to serve as a base coat. Without even cleaning the brush, I'm switching to the faded khaki and I'm going to be doing in between these studs like that. Now I just take some bright silver paint and just touch it to the top of those studs. I don't have to uh, cover the whole thing just touch the top so this is the next day and even the glue is dried pretty flat or both sides of the door I decided that the natural brass color of these pieces wasn't visible from the table so what I did is I just painted them black and then silver so that they match I also painted the door handle now we're going to mount our doors to the stands. For this we're going to use round wooden discs, which are available in big bags in any craft store. The adhesive I'm using is Goop Craft Adhesive. Round stands are way more stable. Um, instead of Goop, we could also use a wood glue, but Goop allows us to stand up our doors immediately. They're fixed just within moments. I'm also going to wipe the excess Goop away. You might wonder, why didn't I paint the base first? It's a good question. If we'd painted the base, we'd be gluing the door to the paint instead of the wood itself. This would make the door less structurally sound. This way we're gluing it right to the wood. So we'll just paint the base black later, and it'll be far more resilient. Making certain the door is centered, I put them between these two paint bottles to act as a vise. Not really to clamp them down, but just to hold them in place straight. And I'm going to leave them there until tomorrow. So silly me, I forgot a step. Actually, I'd forgotten I had this around. This is wood filler. And what we could do is take a little bit of this and add it to the stands for texture. This type comes purple, and uh, when it dries, it will turn white. We don't have to completely cover it. It's just going to there to add a little texture uh, onto the surface and you could also add a little water if you'd like and kind of uh, smooth it over evenly with a brush. It's just going to give a hint of texture. I also want to use your X-Acto knife to put a, a line right down the middle like that. So the wood filler has dried and I'm just going to now paint the entire base black and make sure you get right up to the door and the sides as well. And now we're going to move to dark gray. I'm not even cleaning this brush and I'm, I'm wiping it off the gray on a paper towel and I'm just uh, lightly going over it here. I'm not really dry brushing. I'm trying to get a lot of it on there. But I want to carefully avoid that uh, groove. I want to leave some black in the middle where the break between the tiles would be. That's the way I want it to look. Okay, so next I move to light gray. I don't clean the brush. It's still got that dark gray on it. Now I'm dry brushing. And I'll hit it from a couple of different directions. And the raised areas become more visible. Finally, I dry brush it again with white. For this next step, I'm going to use clear glue. Earlier, I used this clear glue to put the studs on. If you tilt it, you can see some glare. So what we'll do is we'll coat the entire door with it. These studs are on there pretty good, but remember, when this door is going to have a lot of wear and tear, we're going to be picking it up like this all the time, and our fingers are going to touch them. And so just as extra reinforcement, I use this clear glue, and I just brush it liberally on, and this will hold everything in place, and we'll set aside to dry for a few hours. Final step is to spray the doors with flat matte spray lacquer. This will take the sheen off the glue and protect the door, offering an extra layer of protection for the studs and the adornments while protecting the glue from moisture and the door from the oil in our fingertips. Here what the doors look like at the table, perfectly camouflaged with the dungeon tiles around them. If you found this video helpful, click like. You can put your comments in the space below. Subscribe for more great Dungeon Craft videos. This is Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching, and may all your roles be 20s.